Hey everybody, welcome to video 15-4. We're going to be talking about the relationships of certain pieces of segments that are inside of circles, um, and we are going to talk about several different theorems in this section. So it may be a little lengthy, but the reason it's lengthy is because of the explanation that's going to go with it. When you get to the your turns and to the examples, they're going to go really fast. Um, but it's important that you read carefully through the notation. So, um, and then at the end of the video, we're going to summarize pretty much all of these theorems together. So hopefully that'll help. Um, I'm on page 816, as you can see here, with explain one. And we're talking about the chord-chord product theorem. So the name kind of gives away what you're doing there. You are taking two chords of a circle, intersecting inside the circle. That's key that they're overlapping um, at one point that is in the interior of the circle, so point E is inside the circle, um, then what we can say is that the products of the lengths of the segments of the chords are equal. Let's break that down. Product is multiplication, so there's our multiplication happening on each side of the equal sign. The products of the lengths of the segments, that's pieces, okay? So just write that word pieces underneath the word segments there so that you can kind of keep in mind the pieces that the chords are broken into if we multiply them across each chord then those products are the same so you can see here we have AE times EB that's this part of the chord times the other part on the other side of the intersection point is going to equal CE times ED so let's look at the next page for some examples here Example 1, we're going to go through and set up the equation and then plug in all the um, information. And so they set it up for us. We have CE times ED is going to equal AE times EB. Plug in everything that's on the diagram there. 6 times 2 is going to equal X times 3 or 3X. Three and so we can do some quick math there. Subtract, excuse me, divide by 3 and we get that X is 4. Then they also said not only solve for x, but also find the length of each chord. So make sure that you substitute the values back in to find the lengths of CD and AB, the chords of the circle. So 6 plus 2 we already know is 8, but the 4 that we just found we're going to substitute in for x, and we have 4 plus 3 is going to give us our 7. In part B, as we fill in, we've got a new circle scenario here. We're going to set up the equation the same exact way with the chord-chord product theorem, and we're going to solve for x. So in this case, you guys, we have 9hg times 8gj is going to equal the product of the other two parts of the other chord, which is 6 times x. Quick multiplication, 72 is equal to 6x, and therefore 12 is equal to x. Then don't forget we're going to figure out and add those segment lengths together to find the total lengths of each chord, and we're going to take the 9 plus 8 and get 17 for hj, and then we're going to take the 6 plus the x we just found is 12, and get 18 there for um, Ki, and Ki is also, as you know, made up of Kg plus Gi. So there we are for chord-chord product theorem. Pretty straightforward. You've got a your turn here to do in a similar fashion. The next theorem we're going to look at is proving the secant-secant product theorem, so not the chord-chord product, but secant-secant. And it's the same idea um, where the secant, just like the chords, are broken up into two different pieces. Um, and you can see in the diagram. So here's my secant. Remember, the secant is a line that travels all the way through the circle. Here's secant CE and secant AE. And the secants are intersecting in the exterior of the circle. Remember, that's important. The last time we had um, segments crossing on the inside, so this is an exterior point here, E, on the outside of the circle. Then the way that we work this theorem is that if we take the product of the lengths of one secant segment, 
So the secant segment is this piece right here, and its external segment, so that is going to be um, equal to AE, the whole secant segment, times just the outside piece of that segment, so times BE, that's the external secant segment of that one. Um, so the whole thing times the outside, basically, if you want to rewrite it in um, kind of layman's terms. And that that product is going to be the same across each chord. So again, it's the whole length times the external piece equals the whole length times the external piece of the other secant. So let's look through here with example two. Um, example two walks us through how to prove that secant product theorem. We're going to identify the segments in the diagram here, and the whole secant segments in the diagram are AE and CE. Okay, so that's the whole length. And then the external parts are BE and DE, just like in the diagram for the theorem right directly above it. Same labeling. Step two says, okay, now that I know the labels, let's write the um, proof that we need to find, which is that the product of the outside times the whole is equal to the outside times the whole. So here's the proof. What we're going to do is, as you can see in the diagram, they've drawn in for us some auxiliary segments here, AD and CB, to kind of make two overlapping triangles. So if you remember anything about our proofs, I know it was a while ago, but what I would really recommend that you guys do is just re-sketch the overlapping triangles. So here's one triangle, which is C, B, E, and then it's overlapping triangle, and I'm going to flip it around, you'll see why in a second, is going to be D, E, A. Now, let's look at the proof. If we are drawing in the auxiliary line segments here, A, D, and C, B, then we know that angle E, A, D, and E, C, B, so here it is, E, A, D, and E, C, B, both cut off or intercept this common arc, B, D. And so the angle E, A, D and angle E, C, B have to be congruent because they're cutting off that same congruent B, D arc. Then I also know, and so let's actually, let's translate that while we have it. We know those angles are the same up here, but let's translate that down to the diagram. So that's here and here. And then we also know that our angle E is used in both, so we can mark that angle. And so E is equal to E by, as we know, or congruent to E by, there's the reflexive property because it's a shared angle. And so what we can say is we don't have congruence, enough information for congruence, but we do have enough for similarity. And this is by the angle-angle similarity theorem. So therefore, when I have similar triangles, remember, that's corresponding sides that are proportional. So I'm going to set up a proportion. And you can see the corresponding sides are AE with its corresponding piece CE. And then um, they give you a blank to fill in. So you want to make sure you're coming from the same triangle as where we had AE, but the only other side there is corresponding to BE. So that's DE on top and BE on the bottom. And then it says by the multiplication property of equality, um, which is basically just cross multiplying, we can get to what we needed to prove, which is that the outside times the whole equals the outside times the whole on the original circle. And that all comes from similar triangles. Amazing. 
All right, as we move, did I sound like Dr. Berger there? I think I did. <laughs> All right, let's move on to explain three where you're actually going to be applying this theorem. I'm on page 819. On page 819 with explain three here, we're going to use the algebra of the diagram to help us figure out missing pieces and then also the length of each whole secant segment. So we're going to have AC times AB, and again, thinking about what we said, it's always going to be the whole length of the segment times the external piece of the segment. So the whole length of the segment, be careful here, the whole length of segment AC is 5 plus x, because we've got two different algebraic labels there, so notice they keep that in parentheses, and then times just the outside piece 5 is going to be equal to, on the other side, again, the whole length. We need to take into account 6 plus 6 for the two pieces together. So the whole thing times just the outside piece. And then we just have algebra, really, to solve from that point on, you guys. So 5x plus 25, when I just distribute that 5 through and subtract 25, we get 47 and divide by 5, we get 9.4. Then we're going to find the total length of each segment. We're going to do 5 plus the 19.4, so 14.4, and 6 plus 6, as we know already, is 12. So that's the idea of the secant-secant product theorem. Let's do another example with you, and then you'll have a couple of your turns at the bottom of this page here. So part B, again, keeping in mind that we are doing the whole times the exterior, again. The whole um, segment on the bottom there is UP. So that algebra, you guys, is going to be the X plus 7 times just the outside piece, which is 7. Then moving to the other secant segment, the whole length is 8 plus 6, or 14, times just the outside piece, which is 6. From here on out, it's algebra. So 7x plus 49, distributing there, is going to equal 84. Subtracting our 49, 7x is going to equal 35. And this one divides out quite nicely to an x equals 5. UP's total length, therefore, is 7 plus the 5 we just found, or 12. And then we add the other pieces for SP is 14. See what you can do with your turn 6 and 7 before we move on to the next part of the video. So here I am on page 820 here with explain 4. And we've got our final segment theorem that we want to look at, and that is the secant tangent product theorem. Um, so before we had a chord and a chord, and a secant and a secant. This time we have a secant and a tangent that are meeting outside of the circle. And for this one, we are looking at, again, for a secant, remember, it's the outside or exterior part times the whole. So that should come as no surprise that that's the first part of our theorem, the whole thing times just the outside. But in this case, if we do the same thing to the tangent, the whole thing times just the outside actually ends up as the outside squared. So AC times BC will equal DC squared. Okay, so looking at example four, we have a word problem here where we're using um, a satellite and trying to figure out um, what the range of the satellite is, and you can look at the diagram that we've got. Oops, sorry. You can look at the diagram that we've got down here in the corner to kind of figure out what's going on. SP, of course, is my tangent to the circle, and then SA is the whole entire secant segment. So setting up our equation, we have that SA, the whole length, times just the outside SE, is going to equal the outside squared, since sp is the tangent, we square it. So looking back at the um, information that's given, we're told that the diameter of the Earth, this circle here is meant to be the Earth, is 8,000 miles, and that a satellite's orbit is 6,400 miles above the Earth, 
past that diameter. Um, and so we have the total length of the secant, if we were to draw a secant basically like boring through the center of the core of the earth, um, we'd have 8,000 plus 6,400 for the total length times 6,400 on the outside is going to equal x, which is the unknown, because that's, that's the range. We want to know what's the farthest this satellite can reach from orbit. So that's x squared here. Just doing some quick math, 14,400 times 6,400, 6, we get this huge big number. And we're going to take that 92,160,000 number, and to go from x squared to x, we're going to take the square root. Technically, the square root in this equation is going to produce both a plus and a minus answer, but given the constraints of the problem being um, distance for x, we don't measure distance with a negative number. So distance must be positive, therefore we're going to go with 9600 miles. Okay, then we have another example here for part b, still using the secant tangent product theorem. And the equation that we're working with, remember, is the whole length times the outside piece equals the tangent squared. So the whole length in this particular problem is, remember, from b all the way to d, we're going to add the two pieces that are algebraically labeled here together. So we're going to have x plus 2 inside the parentheses for bd times 2 is going to equal the tangent length, which is 5 all squared. Then it's algebra. So all we have to do is distribute 2x plus 4 equals 25 is what 5 squared gives us. 2x is going to equal 21. And then if I divide, we get 10.5 for our x. On the very last page here, we have a your turn number 9 and 10 that we want to do. And again, we've got a, a word problem here for number 9. And uh, for number 10, we just have a, a regular problem without the application side of things. So that's the end of video 15.4. We'll see you in the next one.